Discovering the Real Jesus Discovering the Real Jesus Part 3 Part 5 of 6 Textual Comparisons, 3 Description, Peter's Confessions and Jesus' Rejection at Nazareth, Some Differences Between the Gospel of Mark and the Gospel of Matthew Peter's Confession, Mark 8 verses 27 to 30, Matthew 16 verses 13 to 17 Mark 8 verses 27 to 30 27 Jesus and his disciples went on to the villages around Caesarea Philippi. On the way he asked them, Who do people say I am? 28 They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. 29 Inch But what about you? He asked. Who do you say I am? Peter answered, You are the Christ. 30 Jesus warned them not to tell anyone about him. Matthew 16 verses 13 to 17 13 When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? 14 They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. 15 Inch But what about you? He asked. Who do you say I am? 16 Simon Peter answered, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. What did Peter actually say? Mark, you are the Christ. Matthew, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Many Bible notes and commentaries acknowledge that here Matthew has added the additional phrase into the mouth of Jesus. New Jerusalem Bible, page 34. Jesus rejection at Nazareth, Mark 6 verses 1 to 6, Matthew 13 verses 53 to 58. Mark 6 verses 1 to 6. 1 Jesus left there and went to his hometown, accompanied by his disciples. 2 When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were amazed. Where did this man get these things, they asked. What's this wisdom that has been given him, that he even does miracles? 3 ISN, T this the carpenter. Isn't this Mary's son and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas and Simon? Aren't his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. For Jesus said to them, Only in his hometown, among his relatives and in his own house is a prophet without honor. 5 He could not do any miracles there, except lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. 6 And he was amazed at their lack of faith. Matthew 13 verses 53 to 58. 53 When Jesus had finished these parables, he moved on from there. 54 Coming to his hometown, he began teaching the people in their synagogue, and they were amazed. Where did this man get this wisdom and these miraculous powers, they asked. 55 Inch Isn't this the carpenter's son? Isn't his mother's name Mary, and aren't his brothers James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas? 56 Aren't T all his sisters with us? Where then did this man get all these things? 57 And they took offense at him. But Jesus said to them, Only in his hometown and in his own house is a prophet without honor. 58 And he did not do many miracles there because of their lack of faith. As you can see, Mark's version depicts Jesus as being powerless in the face of unbelief and was unable to do any miracles. Matthew changes the Mark's version to eliminate this problem. Mark, he could not do any mighty work there. Matthew, he did not do many miracles there. Scholars have also suggested that Matthew wanted to avoid the description of Jesus as a carpenter and therefore changed it, due to the general negative attitudes towards manual labor, which were characteristic among the elite of the Greco-Roman world. Jesus heals many, Mark 1 verses 32 to 34, Matthew 8 verses 16 to 17. Mark 1 verses 32 to 34. 32 That evening after sunset the people brought to Jesus all the sick and demon-possessed. 33 The whole town gathered at the door. 34 And Jesus healed many who had various diseases. He also drove out many demons, but he would not let the demons speak because they knew who he was. Matthew 8 verses 16 to 17. 16 When evening came, many who were demon-possessed were brought to him, and he drove out the spirits with a word and healed all the sick. 17 This was to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah. He took up our infirmities. And carried our diseases. In Mark Jesus heals many, but in Matthew he heals all. Jesus' mother and brothers, Mark 3 verses 31 to 35, Matthew 12 verses 46 to 50. Mark 3 verses 31 to 35. 31 Then Jesus' mother and brothers arrived. Standing outside, they sent someone in to call him. 32 A crowd was sitting around him, and they told him, Your mother and brothers are outside looking for you. 33 Inch who are my mother and my brothers, he asked. 34 Then he looked at those seated in a circle around him and said, Here are my mother and my brothers. 35 Whoever does God's will is my brother and sister and mother. Matthew 12 verses 46 to 50. 46 While Jesus was still talking to the crowd, his mother and brother stood outside, wanting to speak to him. 
47 Someone told him, Your mother and brothers are standing outside, wanting to speak to you. 48 He replied to him, Who is my mother, and who are my brothers? 49 Pointing to his disciples, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. 50 For whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. Here, Matthew changes God to Father in Jesus' speech in order to support later developing ideas about Jesus and God. Walking on Water, Mark 6 verses 45-52, Matthew 14 verses 22-33. Mark 6 verses 45 to 52. 45 Immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to Bethsaida, while he dismissed the crowd. 46 After leaving them, he went up on a mountainside to pray. 47 When evening came, the boat was in the middle of the lake, and he was alone on land. 48 He saw the disciples straining at the oars, because the wind was against them. About the fourth watch of the night he went out to them, walking on the lake. He was about to pass by them. 49 But when they saw him walking on the lake, they thought he was a ghost. They cried out. 50 Because they all saw him and were terrified. Immediately he spoke to them and said, Take courage. It is I, don't be afraid. 51 Then he climbed into the boat with them, and the wind died down. They were completely amazed. 52 For they had not understood about the loaves, their hearts were hardened. Matthew 14 verses 22-33 22 Immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side, while he dismissed the crowd. 23 After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. 24 But the boat was already a considerable distance, a, from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. 25 During the fourth watch of the night Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. 26 When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. 27 But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage. It is I, don't be afraid. 28 Inch Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, Tell me to come to you on the water. 29 Inch come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water and came toward Jesus. 30 But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and, beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. 31 Immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You have little faith, he said, why did you doubt? 32 And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. 33 Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. Note the following changes and additions made by Matthew from Mark, firstly, he omitted Bethsaida due to its geographical difficulty. Secondly, Peter in Matthew's Gospel addresses Jesus by the honorific title, Lord. Thirdly, the disciples worshipped Jesus and finally they all confess that Jesus is the Son of God. Through time, like a snowball, the more the message of Jesus was passed around, the more it got bigger and better. The above passage illustrates how Matthew modified the speech of individuals to produce the result, that Jesus is called Lord. Now it is true that Lord does not necessarily mean God. But in the later Christian thinking it will mean exactly that. Matthew was inadvertently setting the stage of Jesus' promotion to Godhead. Discovering the Real Jesus Part 6 of 6 Conclusion Description, Conclusion and How to Truly Discover the True Jesus from the aforementioned discussion, another question arises. How can we trust Mark in everything that he presents about Jesus as historically accurate? It is common knowledge that the present-day Gospels were not written by Jesus nor at his dictation. The earliest Gospel Mark was written around 65 to 70 AD. So there is a time gap between Jesus' ascension and the first Gospel, a gap of about 35 to 40 years. As stated earlier, Mark was not an eyewitness to the life of Jesus, nor do we have clear records showing that the early church memorized the sayings of Jesus. Therefore this gap has to be viewed as considerable. During this time, the traditions of Jesus were being shaped and developed, with many different versions of the Gospels being circulated in the different communities. Furthermore, it is important to stress that the Gospel writers were not merely recorders of tradition. Like the other Gospel writers, Mark also edited his material. He also worked upon and reshaped the traditions that he used. Like the rest of the writers, he also was not attempting to produce a historically accurate biography of Jesus. Their concern was to present material which best served their church and reflected their understanding of Jesus rather than Jesus' own self-understanding. In reconstructing the teaching and actions of Jesus, it is possible to take account of the modifications introduced by the later Gospel writers. But the period between Jesus and the emergence of the written Gospels is far more problematic. Therefore, in attempting to discover the real historical Jesus, we will have to peel back the layers behind all of the stories that were later developed about Jesus. We have to find out who Jesus was, before the Gospels were written about him. When we study the Gospels, we see stories of Jesus evolving over time such that the personality of Jesus grows bigger and better. 
Jesus is shown to be more knowledgeable and more powerful over time, until finally after many councils and disputes, he is officially proclaimed as God in the Council of Nicaea in the year 325 CE. Over the course of time, Jesus was transformed from a Jewish carpenter and messenger of God to the second person in the Holy Trinity. From what he was to something he would never agree with. Yet all is not at lost. Even today, if someone wanted to know the real historical Jesus, then they can do so. God in his infinite mercy, has once more sent a messenger with a pristine message, a message that was not contaminated nor tampered with. In this final message, God tells us that Jesus was a man and a mighty messenger sent by him, that Jesus performed miracles by God's leave. That he was born of a virgin birth and that he would return towards the end of time. In the Quran, God instructs the Christians. O people of the book! Do not exceed the limits in your religion, nor say of Allah aught but the truth. The Messiah Jesus, the son of Mary, was, no more than, a messenger of Allah and his word which he bestowed on Mary, and a spirit created by him, so believe in Allah and his messengers. Say not, 3. Cease. It is better for you. For Allah is one God, glory be him, far exalted is he, above having a son. To him belongs all that is in the heavens and all that is in the earth. And Allah is all-sufficient as a disposer of affairs. Quran 4 171 Say, O Messenger, to the Christians who receive the Gospel, do not overstep the limits in your religion and do not say anything but the truth about Allah in relation to Jesus. The Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, is only Allah's Messenger sent with the truth. He created him by his word which he sent with Gabriel to Mary, which was the word B, and he became. It was a breath from Allah which Gabriel blew with Allah's instruction. So have faith in Allah and all his messengers without making a distinction between them. Do not say, the gods are three foot. Avoid saying this false statement and it will be better for you in this world and the afterlife. Allah is the only one God free of any partner or child. He is self-sufficient. The dominion of the heavens, the earth and whatever is in between the two is his. He is sufficient as a guardian to carry out the affairs of his creation. Anissa, 171